And then from there, I'll do a combination of back bend and deep, opener, deep hip openers. So this is the stage where it may not apply to you anymore. Eh? Don't you ever attempt any of this. These are really deep and advanced ones and could permanently damage your body if you force it. You can just stay and then do this <laughs> and then just recover or lie down, and do some twisting, reclining positions. Yeah. This one is the Gorakshan, Gorak, Gorakshasana or the Badrasana or the Mulabandasana. Some schools call it Mulabandha, but I'm going to progress it in a way that I will deeply rotate through my inner hip. My ankles will rotate, but it's not dead. It's really down there. Yes, so I'm rotating through those inner hip joints. And here, I'm gaining access to my Kandanadi. Yeah. The lingam, yeah, that oblong shape, yeah, resting from below the belly button down the pelvic cavity, or a little bit actually touches, yeah, the belly button and this region, yeah. And I go in, gain access to that oblong shape. Because what's in the middle, inside, the Kandanadi is the Shishimna. Yeah. That's where the energy flows up. Mandukasana, yeah. releasing, <laughs> circling around, up and flipping over. Yeah. Kicking that leg, rubbing that shoulder. Okay, down dog. Let me do another one. Yeah. Yeah, I do mostly the elements more than once. Because the first one is like you're just trying to um, work your way into a deeper version of it. Uh, but the second or the third one is the more meaningful and um, the more energetic one. When I say energetic, I, doesn't, I don't mean like you're just being strong. Energetic means yeah, in this practice of Hatha Yoga is yeah, you're gaining access to the inner energetic anatomy. And the haps, yeah, the nerve clusters, yeah, traveling through your spine. And you know, sometimes I do my Udiana Banda here. Some blinking of the hands behind. Asana. And down and kicking those legs. Beautiful. 
alternating three legged dog <laughs> you notice if I do myself practice I look like an animal <laughs> slithering through gliding through the joints right. Sutta Vajrasana This is another technique I find really challenging. Oh, it's a challenging <laughs> one actually, <laughs> not just for me, but for a lot of practitioners. And I, I wanted to really go deep because I'm open inside. If I do not go deep, yeah, my body will hurt after. That's the, I say, the hard truth about when your energetic anatomy is open. Yeah, you've gained access to it, and then you can't just back off. Yeah, you need to sustain it for the rest of your life. Yeah, I will fall on what elbow so I can rub that around. And breathing in. Yeah. And still adjust, you know, rubbing from shoulder to shoulder, hip to hip. And I use my tongue yeah, to gain access to my deep shoulder pockets. Breathe. Oh. Yeah. This position never fails to yeah, impress me. But like every time I practice it, I gain deeper realizations uh, of the nature of the body. Or maybe because today, I feel a bit like tighter than yeah, most of my practice day. It's quite cold in here. We're in the middle of winter and in the morning, the joints. Then I like the cold, yeah. You can do this to open the side trunk and the other one. One more, this side. Yeah, to open this. Yeah, the nadis. Ida pingala. All right, come up. All right. One more. Opposite shoulder. Which leg did they do? <laughs> Sometimes I forget. All right, that's it. And this my tight shoulder. Yeah, but I'll try. It's a deep thoracic extension at the same time. Deep back bend. And hip open it too. my microphone is not cutting off. Yeah, circle around, up and down. Side stretching. I feel my inner body is brimming already. Pardon if I use my tongue a lot. 
Pierce. No. That's where I can really gain access to those deep pockets. Remember the lesson? Yeah. I've given you a while back about how the tongue is connected to the many channels and compartments and cavities and lines and spaces. It's one anatomical part of us, which is very active in the meditative aspects of the practice. And then for me, this is actually meditation already. Yeah. All right. Two more, actually three more. Yeah. Dabada Padmasana. Leaning over that one knee. And then fold in the middle. And for this uh, part of my self practice, I do three different asanas, one after the other. From there, yeah, I roll to a gentle rocking and a bit of a shoulder stretch here. Sometimes I'll do flapping fish, but I feel like doing this to save time because I'll be teaching in an hour, so I only have this time for my self practice. And then today is busy. Viparita Karani. Right. Well, sometimes I'll do halasana right away. Then I'll do the viparita karani mudra. With the Navajo Mudra sometimes. Not sometimes, actually, all the time I do this. The soft palate at the back. thigh massage uh, to open the lines of the hips again preparation for the next one and I'll do one Suvta Kandasana like my variation, adding the side stretch into the asana in the Kandanadi. Yeah. Actually, we have like all concentric motion or um, shapes inside. From the Kandanadi, another here, and another here, and even the neck, yeah, and then the head. So we're like, the um, energetic anatomy is like, oblong shape inside. Yeah. From one point, it goes to the side and intersects to the next 
Second point, yeah, like layers. I'll do a bit of a shake there. All right, and sitting Gandasana. Yeah, drawing the thigh bone in. And settling in the position. Almost there. How long? Yeah. It took me, yeah, for me to be able to do this. Uh, techniques, many years really. I can't actually give you a figure. Yeah. But even then, yeah, my practice, well, I say is quite fast. Yeah. It took me about maybe 10, 15 years. Yeah, that's still, that's a short time compared, yeah. oh, my microphone is, yeah, because this is my work. <laughs> I'm just so grateful to have the, the support, <laughs> but entails lots of sacrifices. I say it's my calling, yeah. Crossing and flipping backwards. It might not be perfect externally. What's what's important is how the inner body feels inside. I'm doing Plavini Pranayama. So I can open my Svadeshtana. Down, a bit of recovery, yeah. working those inner hip joints again. <laughs> I might reach over the twist. All right. One last. When the hips, uh, the inner hips are open, yeah, it might seem like externally, I'm rotating from my ankles and my knees. Yes, they move, but the reason why they move is because yeah, the thigh bones move inside, yeah and they just follow. It's like this, yeah? Once the, the hip bone, or the hip bones and the hip joints are able to move, your body will just rotate externally.
All right. All right. Hold that nice and deep. Up and down. And then one more sitting. Kandasana. Yes, I do, I do Kandasana four times. Similarly, how I do my Kapatasana. And sometimes I would do it more. Yeah, if I feel like I fail to gain access to, yeah. Those lines and spaces inside. As required from this position. Because the Kandasana, yeah, from the word itself, Kandasana, yeah, the Kandanadi, yeah. So you have to trace through, yeah, the borders of that part of you. It's around the pelvic cavity. And what it does, yeah, it paves way for the opening of the middle channel, the Shashumna. Uh, so you can breathe through that line. Not to mention, um, it's really powerful from, for um, treating, even healing, the issues of the reproductive system. Uh, it's very revitalizing and rejuvenating. And rubbing here. All right. And I'll do one more round of the flipping fish to reset. Yes, the other one. Quite restless, eh? <laughs> it feels good. Okay. All right, about to finish. Alternating three legged dog. Yeah. I'll try to jump up there. Eh? Yes, nice and light. And come down. Okay, from there, kneeling. Oh, stressing on. And Kapotasana. After flexion, and you go back to extension. That really challenges your physical, energetic, Mental discipline. Yes. All right. Okay, and just reposition, so I'm level. It's 
sweet. Oh, wow. Every self practice is like a first time practice. <laughs> this is about it. Crazy, eh? But if I don't do this, I will feel heavy, even tired, sluggish. Which brings me to the topic of, is it for us? Is it for you? Yeah, because you know what? Once you've gained access to your energetic anatomy, your physical anatomy, more than an average person, or maybe 90% of the population is capable of doing, then you can't back off. You have to face it, go into it, resurface safely, sanely, yeah. and then go through the process over and over and over again. And if there's one lesson uh, you may want to gain from this yeah, video is that yeah. generally we don't need them. Yeah. For the health and wellness of the body, for the peace and the clarity of the mind, just basic asana, basic pranayama, yeah, they're more than enough. Yeah, this is me, this is my nature, I'm a teacher, therefore I need to understand where the techniques originally come from, originally you know, start from the very root, and even the meditation, so I don't talk uh, from a theoretical perspective, I speak from experience. Right. Inhale. And then when it happens through experience, you know the safety and the pitfalls, you know, you know uh, the real life essence, and not being too poetic and dramatic about it. Yeah. More real life, yeah, close to you in general. And then even the essence of spirit and yeah, the divinity of us, divinity in us, yeah, it's real life. Yeah. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for sharing your time with me and yeah, have a lovely day.